Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Tuesday, January the 10th. It is 10, 16 in the morning. We're going to start off with uh, Psalms 2. It is only 12 verses. It is an anonymous psalm indeed. Let's begin. <clears throat> Why do the nations conspire? And the people plot in vain. Why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs, the Lord scoffs at them. Then he rebuffs them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask to me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Therefore, you kings be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way. For his wrath can flame up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Okay, that is all eight, uh, 12 verses of Psalms 2. I have some key words for you and then we have a pretty long reading. I don't think we're going to finish it today. It's 55 verses. Let me start off with the key words first. Uh, here's a good one. Promise. Promise. It's something that you do that you speak unto another person and it's supposed to be something that you also honor. When you say, I promise to do this or I promise to do that, this thing that you have promised, it must come to pass. Okay, so a promise is like a declaration or assurance that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen. Whatever your promise is, you should, without doubt, make sure that you honor that promise. A promise can also be called your word of honor. It can be called uh, an agreement in layman's term. It can be called a commitment in layman's term. It can be called a guarantee in layman's term. It can be called a contract in layman's term. It can also be called an oath. According to the Bible, it can be called a void. It could be called a covenant. So whether you call it in layman's term or in biblical terms, it means the same thing. You must fulfill that which you promise. Now, there are some situations in which we make promises and it backfires on us. We make a void and it backfires on us. So why am I saying that? You should be very careful of the promises and the voice that you make unto God. Okay, These promises are to be honored whether you are making them to man or you're making them to God. But if you're going to break a promise... The promise you make to God cannot be broken. If it comes out of your mouth, it cannot be broken. Period. For God will hold you to it. So it's best to be careful with the promises that you give God. 
more so than the promises that you give men. Okay? Because whatever speaks out of your mouth, God will hold you to it. And it may not be a pleasant thing. This is why I say, be very careful what promise you give to God. Okay? So, God also gives promises. He says, if you honor your father and your mother, your days will be long. That is his promise to you. Okay? And God always keeps his promises. He's not like man. All right? It's never failing. At all. He doesn't fail in his promises or anything that God speaks out of his mouth. He does not fail in it at all. All right. We have Jagur Sahaduda. Jagur Sahaduda. Jagur Sahaduda means heap a witness. A heap a witness that means there's more than two three or four witnesses there it's called Jigur Sahadura you will hear it in the story that we begin today you may not hear it because it's kind of in the middle or in the end of this story you always you will also hear misfat which means heap uh, which means watchtower or loosely interpreted as may God watch over you. Misfah. Watchtower or may God watch over you. Okay. And um, Galid, Galayit means the same thing as heap of witnesses. One man said, Jagur Sahaduda, which means heap of witnesses, and the other man said, galay it, which means the same thing, okay? Um, we'll read that one maybe tomorrow. Let's go to the reading for today. This is, uh, we're going back to the book of Genesis. We're reading about what occurred between Jacob and Laman, his father-in-law. Now he worked for this man for 20 years. He worked seven years for the first wife in which he didn't get the first wife, he got the sister instead. Then he worked another seven years for the one that he truly wanted. Then he had to work six years for his cattle. So he worked for him for 20 years, and after 20 years, this man prospered the entire 20 years. He never gave birth to any um, deformed cattle or sheep or goat. He never lost any of them at birth. He did nothing but gain with Jacob by his side. And because the man feared God, he was tender on how he dealt with Jacob. And that runs to date. Okay? If somebody feels that you are among the children of God, they will be mindful of how they deal with you today. It's not because they're afraid of you. You have nothing to do with it. It's because they're afraid of your God. Even if they're, they don't practice the same God as you. Okay? Let's get that straight. Because you're nobody to fear. And neither am I. Okay? So let's begin with um, Jacob flees from Laban. And we're going to try to get it all in. But if we can't, we can always continue tomorrow. Jacob heard that Laban's sons 
were saying, Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all this wealth from what belongs to our father. So they're talking a lot of smack. All right. And so happens this came to the ear of Jacob. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude towards him was not what it had been. Then the Lord said to Jacob, go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives and I will be with you. So Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah to come out to the field where all his flocks were. He said to them, I see that your father's attitude towards me is not what it was before. But the God of my fathers has been with me. You know that I've worked for your father with all my strength. Yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. However, God has not allowed him to harm me. Amen. If he said, the, sprickle, the, the spicket ones will be your wages, then all the flocks gave birth to spicket young. And if he said, the, sh the streeted ones will be your wages, then all the flocks born streeted young. So God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. That's how God does it. That's how he does it. Okay? There, 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 there's nothing you, you, you don't have to have a hand in what's going on in your life. It's all God doing it for you. Okay? In breeding season, I once had a dream in which I looked up and saw that the male ghost mating with the flock was shredded, speckled, and spotted. The angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, I answered, here I am. And he said, look up and see that all the male goats mating with the flocks are shredded, spickled, and spotted. For I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar, and where you made a boy to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. Then Rachel and Leah replied, Do we still have any share in the inheritance of our father's estate? Does he not regard us as foreigners? Not only has he sold us, but he has used up what was paid for us. Surely all the wealth that God took away from our father belongs to us and our children. So do whatever God has told you. This is the response his wives said to him. Then Jacob put his children and his wives on camels, and he drove all his livestock ahead of him along with all the goods he had accumulated in Pata Aram, to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. When Laman had gone to shear his sheep, Rachel stole her father's household gods. Moreover, Jacob deceived Laman, the Aramean, by not telling him he was running away. So he fled with all he had, and crossing the river, he had headed for the hill country of Gilead. Laman pursues Jacob. Verse 20, on the third day, Laman was told that Jacob had fled. Taking his relatives with him, he pursued Jacob for seven days and caught up with him in the hill mountain of Gilead. Then God came to Laman the Arabian in a dream at night and said to him, Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. That's a dream. You better be careful when the Lord gives you a warning. Okay. Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill of Gilead when Laman overtook him and Laman and his relatives camped there too. Then Laman said to Jacob, what have you done? You've deceived me. You carried off my daughters like captives in war. Why did you run off secretly and deceive me? Why didn't you tell me so I could send you away with joy and singing to the music of tambourines and harp? This is not what Laman would have been doing at all. This is just something he was saying that he would do for Jacob. When this was not the scenario that would have happened. Okay, and God knew this. You didn't even let me kiss my grandchildren and my daughters goodbye. You had done a foolish thing. 
I have power to harm you, but last night the God of your father said to me, be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. It's funny how back in the biblical time, a man could have a dream and know that it's a divine dream and would listen to that dream. Today, it is not so. Why? Because you have so many people worshiping fake gods. Or their bank account. Or some rock in their household that speaks not. The world is far away from God compared to where we used to be in the biblical time. Now we're so far away from him. We're as, one, we're as far away from God as one end of the Pacific Ocean is from the other. And our wickedness just keeps on heaping up like a termite mount. Everything that happens in this world, we blame it on each other. Corona came from Chinese. This came from that. Remember, brothers and sisters, we have limited control of what happens in our country. Limited. Those things that are out of our control is what God is doing. Everything, including that role versus Wade decision from the Supreme Court. All of it. Now, you have gone off because you long to return to your family's house, your father's house, but why did you steal my gods? Jacob answered, here you go. This is where he made his mistake. Jacob answered Laban, I was afraid because I thought you would take your daughters away from me by force. But if you find anyone who has your gods, he shall die in the presence of our relatives. See for yourself. This is where he made his mistake. It would have been better for him to question his relatives. Starting off with the daughters. But without even knowing... He made this statement. Once it comes out of your mouth, it, it, it is written in stone. Period. There's nothing he can do to stop it. At all. Whether there is anything of yours here with me, and if so, take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen the gods. He was unaware of this. So Laman went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the tent of the two maid servants, but he found nothing. After he came out of Leah's tent, he entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the household gods and put them inside her camel saddle and was sitting on them, bleeding. She was bleeding on the faith God, which is okay with me. Laman searched throughout everything in the tent, but found nothing. Rachel said to her father, Don't be angry, my lord, that I cannot stand up in your presence. I'm having my period. So he searched, but could not find the household gods. Jacob was angry and took Laban to the task. Where, what is my crime? He asked Laman. What sin have I committed that you hunted me down? Now that you have searched through all my goods... What have you found that belongs to your household? Put it here in front of your relatives and minds. Let them judge between the two of us. I have been with you for 20 years now. Your sheep and goats have not miscarried, nor have I eaten ram from your flocks. I did not bring you animals torn by wild beasts. I tore, I bore the loss myself. And you demanded payment from me for whatever was stolen by day or night. This is my situation. 
that he consumed me in the daytime and the cold at night and slept flat from my eyes. It was like this for the 20 years I was in your household. He was always cold or hot. Very uncomfortable for the whole 20 years. Grievous as well. I worked for your 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flocks and you charge my wage you change my wages ten times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac had not been with me, you would surely have sent me away empty handed. But God has sent my hardship, has seen my hardship with the toes of my hand, and last night he rebuffed you, Amen. Laman answered Jacob, The woman are my daughters. The children are my children, and the flocks are my flocks. All you see is mine. Yet, what can I do today about these daughters of mine or about the children they have born? Come now, let's make a covenant, you and I, and let it serve as a witness between us. Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. He said to his relative, gather some stones. So they took stones and piled together in a heap, and they ate there by the heap, Laman called there Jagra Shahadora, which means heap of stone, and Jacob called there Galilee, 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 he called it. It means the same thing, heap of stones, okay? Laman said, this heap is a witness between you and me. That is why it was called Galilee. It was also called Mizpah. Because he said, may God, may the Lord keep watch between you and me, which is what it means. May the Lord keep watch over you. Okay. The Lord kept watch between you and me when we are away from each other. If you mistreat my daughters or if you take any wives besides my daughters, even though no one is with us, remember that God is a witness between you and me. Laban also said to Jacob, here is this heap, and here is this pillar I have set up between you and me. This heap is a witness, and this pillar is a witness that I will not go past this heap to your side to harm you, that you will not go past this heap and pillar to my side to harm me. May the God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of, you, of their fathers, judge between us. So Jacob took an oath. In the name of the fear of, of his father's Isaac, he offered a sacrifice there in the hill country and invited his relatives to a meal. After they had eaten, they spent the night there. Early the next morning, Laban kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. Then he left and returned home. Now you remember that God that Rachel was sitting on Remember that promise that Jacob made? Well, that promise did come to pass as she delivered their second child. She did not make it. That was her punishment for stealing from her father. And Jacob's punishment was making a void before he was certain that no one in his household was responsible for what his father-in-law was accusing him of. So let us all learn from that. Learn to be sure. Ask questions if you don't know. Never assume anything. Never. Ask questions. Be certain. Be sure. And things will go better. Thank you for listening. My name is Brenda Guerrero. And as always, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you and all those you love. And may the will of God for his earth be manifested. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you tomorrow.